<laughs> oh, these dogs are in love. Oh, he's hot. I'm Maslow. Like in my spectacles. Hey, hey Pablas! Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about Keyshans. Or Kaysons. Or Case Hunts. Technically, Case Hunts is the most proper way how to say it, but it's spelled Keyshan, so when we talk about the breed, we're going to say Case Hunt. Yes. And if you didn't know, this is our new pup, Maslow. Maslow is our 20 week old puppy. And um, since we got him, we've had so many questions about the breed, what he's like, how Maslow is, how he's getting along with Pavlov. And so um, this video is compiling all of the questions and information we have for you. So we're gonna give you a breakdown of the breed, their temperament, and what our experience has been like owning one. So to get started, what, what's a case hunt? A caisson is a non-sporting breed, and fun fact, the AKC, when they have a group of non-sporting dogs, is just the group of dogs that don't really belong in any other category, so it's a really random mix of dogs like poodles, bulldogs, chow chows. Even if they're labeled as non-sporting, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not athletic, it just means they're just so random. <laughs> mm -hmm. A caisson is a medium sized Spitz breed and they're not a mix of anything. A lot of people think he's a mix of a Husky and a Pomeranian, but no. Caissons are their own breed. They're close cousins to the Smoyed, the Chow Chow, and the Pomeranian. They're not really common dogs. They're pretty rare actually. Um, I think they were like number 195 of the most common dogs. And many people have actually never heard of them or even seen one in person. We didn't see one in person until we decided to get one. So physically, a full grown caisson will be about 35 to 40 pounds. Which is like... So not as big as a Samoyed, but not as small as a Pomeranian. It's really an in-between of those two. Um, and they are super fluffy, as you can see. Super sturdy, because they're going to be about like a little medium stocky build. Um, they have a little curly tail here. And what's really cool is if you touch it, like his anatomy is like this curled little tail thing. It's not just something that the fluff does. Yeah, it's a coil. It's a legit coil. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it'll, it definitely springs back. <laughs> um, let's see. They have a little fox face, and one of their defining features is their spectacles. So they have this sophisticated, refined look um, that makes it look like they're wearing these little glasses. And fortunately, or at least Maslow has pretty defined little spectacles that I think really make him stand out. Yes. In terms of origins, they're originally from the Netherlands, and they were bred for guarding and companionship. They would actually leave them out on the docks, um, so they would just guard the boats or anyone who came by or try to steal a boat. They would bark a lot, so people would know if someone, a stranger, was close to their boat. They may be guard dogs, but they're not the type to be aggressive or attack an intruder. Um, the way that they let their owners know that someone is approaching is that they bark, and they bark, and they bark. And so, um, that's one of their defining features is actually they're quite yappy. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but just the heads up on what it means to be a guard dog. This dog was associated with a rebellion. And so after that rebellion failed, this dog was actually seen as um, residue from that type of ideology. And so, if you had one of these dogs, you were associated with the failed rebellion, and so because of that, the breed's popularity went down throughout the 18th century. In terms of temperament, we got a lot of questions about what keys are really like. Well, ultimately, they're super smart, alert, obedient, playful, and super bright. They can be really emotional, and there's like pros and cons to that. He is much more of a companion dog, and much more tied to us emotionally. He wants to always be near us. We'll be on the couch and he'll be like this close to us. I would say they're pretty sensitive. On top of that, they love people. They want to be around their family. So if you are considering getting one, um, I would consider how much time you spend at home. If you're spending 12 hours you know, away, you work in a hospital or something, um, these dogs will not do well being away from their family for that long. So just something to consider. They want to be around you because they love your affection and just having you around. And they get um, sad when they can't. Like, yeah. Genuinely sad. 
And that's a strength because it means that they really, really love you. Um, but it can also be a weakness if you're looking for a dog who's a little bit more independent. Yeah, talking about the comforting side. Fun fact, during the 9-11 incident, um, these dogs were on the ground comforting firefighters who were rescuing people. So they're very comforting dogs. They're really good as therapy dogs as well. I read online that K-Suns are Velcro dogs. Can you tell me what a Velcro dog is? Yeah, so... A Velcro dog is quite literally a dog that really sticks around close to you, um, similar to Velcro. He never really wanders off, and I've never had a dog like that. My dogs love wandering. Pavlov loves wandering. If you put him at the beach, he'll be like a mile away from you, and he's okay with that. But this guy, I swear, does not leave us within like not even like six feet proximity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he stays pretty close and it's just like he keeps an eye on you. Mm -hmm. On top of that, caissons in general can get along with a lot of different dog breeds. They're quite submissive in their personalities, so I think they're a good pair for a lot of different dogs out there. A funny story actually is that when we first got Maslow, we were trying to leash train him and he just wouldn't come because he was trying to figure out the whole leash situation. And so we took him off leash just to see how he would do, and he just followed us everywhere. He was like an eight-week potato, just like flopping around, popping around and following us, and it just really spoke to how, in his very nature, he just sticks to you. What about exercise? Caissons require a moderate amount of exercise. We take Maslow on a morning walk, an afternoon walk, and an evening trip to the dog park, and he still has quite a bit of energy by the end of the day. But that being said, they don't have to be super stimulating, and you do have to be mindful of them overheating. They get really hot, and um, <laughs> this guy avoids the sun like the plague. And so, <laughs> like he'll go like, Stand still. So in the right environment, um, he'll, he'll thrive with a moderate amount of exercise. They're also good apartment dogs. As long as you give them the proper amount of exercise, they can definitely live in the apartment. They're not huge runners in the apartment, I would say. Something that was really surprising to me was how athletic he is. So he's fast, and they're really springy. Um, and this is, it's really funny seeing how his body is very different from our Courtney's body um, because his legs are longer and just the athletic capacity is so much higher. So even though they may overheat, they make really good agility dogs. This is not a dog I would keep outdoors for long periods of time either. Because of their thick coats, they do overheat as Anthony was saying. So you got a fluffy dog. One of the most common questions we have is do they shed or do you have to groom them? What do you think? I'm sorry, but what do you think you gotta do with this thing? We have to groom Maslow daily. I don't think you could see this on the camera, but like, it's a little insane. These guys shed a lot. And the problem is not only do they shed, their fur requires a lot of maintenance or else it'll get matted. We spend a lot of time grooming and some people even get them professionally groomed, which can be costly. So that's a cost if you want a case on to consider. It takes time to groom them. I think we spend like half an hour each night just brushing him out. And it's like, you have to get deep in there. Mm -hmm. When we first got him, we were just doing it with this like wire brush and we were just like, cha da 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 On the outer coat, right? Yeah, yeah, they're multi-layered coats. I think they're like, some people say triple. I think it's double though. Um, so they have really long fur. So you have to really get down to the roots and then comb it out. However, one reason we did get this breed was their relative low health risk. They're quite healthy and they can live an average lifespan of 12 to 15 years. The good thing about getting a case hunt is that while they may be rare and hard to get, that's because there's a lot of delicacy in the breeding process. Most breeders don't breed just cause, they have to have a purpose. Um, for example, it might be because they need to breed them or they're looking to show them or extend the bloodline. So Maslow was bred for the purpose of showing. And so um, that was the only way we were able to get our hands on one. But because there's so much care put into the breeding process, there's an emphasis on making sure that only the healthiest and most standard dogs are capable of breeding. This is a pro of getting a less popular dog. With corgis, um, there's a big high demand for corgis. Um, but with caissons, not a lot of people know about them. Not a lot of people get them. Um, so they stay in the smaller circle of people and they're not bred as much. Mm -hmm. So that happens to make better genetics. 
but the overall impact is that they're healthy and they live long because of that. Overall, caissons are great companion animals who love being around their family. He's a perfect balance of health, companionship, and sports-like athletic abilities. <laughs> so other than the shedding, the barking, and the overheating, he's been a great addition to our family. We mentioned previously that it can be difficult to get a caisson, so how do you get one if you want one? Well, our advice is that you go to the Caissons of America page online and on Facebook in order to get a list of reputable breeders and learn more about what the breed is like in general. Um, if you are interested in one, the breeders that you call are going to have an expectation that you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, they're not just going to hand over these dogs to everyone, anyone because they require a lot of care. And so make sure you do your research, you take your time, and understand that this is actually probably a long process. We've heard of some people being on wait lists for multiple years, um, and that's not uncommon. So if you're interested in getting a case on, we'll leave a link below so you can get access to the proper resources and information. So on Instagram, I put out a lead for some questions that you might have about caissons, um, and we want to answer them for you guys right now. So, one, will you ever shave them if it gets too warm? No! Never! Yes. No. Yes to the no. <laughs> um, so, double coat dogs, um, there's a misconception that if you shave off another layer, they'll be better, but the double coat actually helps them regulate their temperature even better, so it's never okay to shave your dog. Leave them as is, unless they're a poodle or something. Yeah, don't, it's don't. never okay, it's never okay to shave your caisson. Yeah. Don't shave your corgi either. Yeah, not your corgi, not your caisson, their double coat is a protective layer. Don't do it. It's not going to help them. You can brush him out. <laughs> but and they will shit. And he would look so ugly. Don't do that. Number two. How do you guys clean all the floof? So, like we said, we brush him daily. Um, we have like five or six different brushes and combs because there's just a different process to getting through different parts of his fur. Um, we'll have a longer video detailing like, how to get really into his fur and to brush it a little bit more, but um, the main thing is just to make sure that you brush him often because the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get later. And our next question is, how often do we groom him? Every day. Yeah. Every day. We try to do it every night. So every when night. we're watching TV, we just take out the grooming tools and just brush and brush around. <laughs> um, it's been part of our routine. How did we decide on a caisson? Wow. Okay. So, when we thought about getting a second dog, it was really important that the dog fit in with our family. So there's us two, we live in an apartment, and we have a corgi. And many people actually think that just because you have one dog, you should get one of a similar dog because they're going to get along. And that's not the case. If you've seen two corgis together, they're probably pretty crazy. Um, so we actually look for a dog that was compatible with Pavlov. In some ways, was like the opposite of Pavlov because we needed something to balance his craziness and what we got was a companion dog who isn't really work-driven and wants to be around us. Yeah, he really compliments Pavlov a lot and I feel like he was a missing piece of our family. On top of that, Pavlov is a very expensive breed to upkeep with all the medical costs. This one has a lot less medical costs, so that was something to consider for us too, for future cost. And overall, we just wanted companionship. <laughs> one factor that I think is important that led us to caissons and not another breed was the size. So before him, I was dead set on getting a Samoyed. I was like, I want a little cloud, I want a big cloud, I guess. Um, but Samoyeds can get pretty big. They get... I, he gets to be about 35 to 40 pounds. I think Samoyeds can get like to 60 to even like 80 to 100 pounds if they're overweight. And that's not always practical to have in your life. Um, if you want to fly, you can't just have your Samoyed sit underneath you. Um, you might need to get a completely different seat. So with him being only 35 to 40 pounds, we thought it was the perfect size. We did research into his temperament and overall found that he's the complete package to fit in with our family. Yeah, we like to travel a lot, so plane travel is really important to us, so we wanted to make sure we got a compact animal, and caissons are very compact for a medium-sized dog. The next question is, how does he get along with other dogs, and how does he get along with other people? Hmm, I think he can be a little shy at first approaching people, 
like at the dog park right now, he's very shy about letting people touch him. They're more skeptical. Yeah, they're more skeptical of others. Yeah. They don't mind being around other people, but they're a little skeptical. They're kind of like, who are you? But once they warm up to you, you can be like their favorite person. Yeah. In terms of dogs and how he gets along with dogs, he is quite submissive. Um, it took him a while to learn how to initiate play, but now he initiates play really well. And I think that all comes down to socialization at a younger age. Mm -hmm. So if any, with any puppy, I really recommend you guys do socialization with them so that when they are around other types of dogs, they can know how to navigate that. Yes. Are they easy to train? Yeah, I think they're easy to train. Um, like I mentioned, they're not working dogs like corgis are, and so they have maybe less of a drive to accomplish a task. Um, but they do want to make you happy. And they're also really food motivated. And so if you find something that motivates your dog, and a dog that's willing to make you happy, generally that's a good formula for, for training. Yes. Are they clingy or independent? Pavlov is independent, Maslow is super clingy. Clingy as heck. So clingy. I'll be doing work, I'll get up to go to the bathroom, he'll follow me to the bathroom. I'll get a, like a snack from the kitchen, he'll follow me to the kitchen. He likes to follow me everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like I'll go out for a second to grab mail, he'll like want to come out with me. Um, he's super clean. But yes, as Anthony was saying, crate training is very hard with them because they're so clingy. Um, it was difficult for him to just be away from us because he would cry. He just wanted our like, you know, our bodies to be close to his. Like the first night we had him, we tried to leave the crate in the living room with him in it. And we realized like he was not going to stop crying after an hour. Um, so we had to bring the crate inside our room. Anthony actually had to physically sleep next to his crate with his fingers inside. Um, I actually did a lot of research about this on the case on page and it's very normal for them to be like this. They're just very emotional and loving and now he's much better. Yeah. Okay. Shedding compared to corgis. I think it's worse. I think it's worse. Their hair is longer than a corgi and it's like thinner and it gets everywhere. It's mm. like staticky. Where did I first learn about this breed? I took a quiz. <laughs> She took a quiz! That's how I found Pavlov, too. That's how I learned <laughs> about corgis, too. I actually wasn't really big on Instagram or like, you know, I didn't, they weren't as popular on social media and neither are these dogs, but I like to take quizzes and I like to do my research on breeds and what's out there and what's most compatible with my family, so I just did a lot of research on the web and found him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we hope you guys learned a lot about case hunts and enjoyed hearing a little more about Maslow. <laughs> If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll make sure that we respond to those as soon as we can. If you like our videos, please make sure that you like this and subscribe and um, we love you. See you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye.